So now let's take that problem and let's do a complete hypothesis test. So I'm going to give you a little bit more information in the words of the of the, the beginning uh, introduction to the problem. We're going to this was everything that was provided by before. We know that the mean is 1.2 seconds. We know that the population standard deviation is 0.5 seconds. And we're looking to counterclaim that the mean is less than 1.2 seconds. Okay, that was all provided before. Now um, I'm going to give you some information about the experiment. 100 rats, she injects 100 rats, so there's a sample size, with a unit dose of the drug and finds the sample mean, there's your X bar, is 1.5, so X bar is 1.5. Do drug injected rats have a mean response time that's less than 1.2 seconds? And we're supposed to use an alpha of 1%. So let's take this hypothesis test from beginning to end, and then at the end we'll decide if we've made if we it's possible that we've made either a type one or a type two error. So our hypotheses: the null hypothesis is the population mean response time for drug injected rats is 1.2 seconds. Symbolically, mu equals 1.2. Okay, the null hypothesis, or sorry, the alternative hypothesis, the population mean response time for drug injected rats is less than 1.2 seconds. Mu less than 1.2. So I'm just going to drill home the, I the idea of the null and alternative hypotheses. They always begin with the words the population mean the population mean. And the null hypothesis is going to state the population mean is some value and the alternative will be the population mean is less than or is greater than that same value. Okay, the mean of the sampling distribution with its symbol um, this is a collection of sample means. Our sampling distribution is a collection of all the sample means. So the mean of our sampling distribution is mu sub x bar. That's the correct symbol. And here's the value. It's 1.2. It's the same as the mean of the population. Is it going to be based on the normal distribution or the t distribution and why? Well, at this point, we've only seen tests that are based on the normal distribution. So we're going to pick the normal distribution. And the reason why is because we are given the population standard deviation and n is greater than 30. When we don't have the population standard deviation, we're going to start using the t distribution. Okay, let's make the decision rule. Decision rule is the rule that guides us in how we, we find our actual final decision. So you can, um, you can look at a bell curve and you can label the bell curve. You label the center with the mean of the sampling distribution, the same as the mean of the population, mu sub x bar equals 1.2. And since our alternative hypothesis is making the counterclaim that mu is less than 1.2, our test is on the left. Less than 1.2 would be this area down here. Um, we don't know the results of our test yet, so this is just the setup. We know that we're using an alpha of 1%, so we're going to shade in the bottom 1% of area of the bell curve. We're going to make a vertical line that cuts off that bottom 1%. And any p-value that falls inside that 1% is going to be evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So any p-value that falls in this area, reject the null hypothesis. If our p-value falls in this area, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So putting that into words, we're going to say, reject HO reject the null hypothesis, at alpha equal 1% if the p-value of the sample statistic is less than or equal to 0.01. So we want our p-value to become smaller 
than 1% because if we have a p-value that's smaller than 1%, it pushes our sample result further and further away from this 1.2, which gives us strong evidence to eventually reject 1.2. So a small p-value, reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that's the setup of the problem. At this point, we have not looked at our sample data at all. And now when we get to the point where we analyze the sample data, we can actually take a look at our sample size and our sample result. So when asked what is the, simple, the, the symbol of your sample statistic in this problem, it is x bar because your sample statistic is a sample mean. There are some hypothesis tests, and, and we don't have time in this course to discuss all of them, but there are some hypothesis tests that have different sample statistics. Um, eventually, we are going to see the chi-square hypothesis test, where the sample statistic is not x-bar, and uh, it's a different symbol altogether. So you'll see that when we get to it. Here, we're looking at a sample mean, and so our sample statistic is x bar. The value that we have for our sample mean is 1.05. That came from the problem. So uh, that 1.05 does not come into play until we are asked to analyze the results of the experiment. Okay, so if we look at where 1.05 is in reference to the mean of this distribution, um, we know it's somewhere on the left-hand side. So we know the center of the distribution, mu sub x bar is 1.2. We know 1.05 is on the left side because it's smaller. And now the next step is let's figure out what that p-value is for 1.05. The p-value is going to be all the area from negative infinity up to 1.05. Now, when we figure out that p-value, whether or not it's less than or greater than 1% is going to be the judging factor in how we make our conclusion. So we go to your calculator, and you're going to go to the z-test because this is a test um, in which we have the, the um, population standard deviation, so we're using z-test. Stat test z-tests. So um, when you hit stat, you bring, uh, brings you there. You're going to go over the, to the test menu. You're going to click number one for z-test. And at the top, you have the option of either choosing data or stats. For this problem, you don't have the raw data. You have the statistics. So you're going to press stats. Make sure stats is highlighted. Mu sub zero is basically the mean for the population. That is 1.2. Or that's the, um, the HO. That's the uh, established mean for the population. The population standard deviation, 0.5. Okay, let me just verify that that was what it was. I believe it was 0.5, right? Yes, 0.5 seconds. Okay, so 1.2 for the mean of the population, 0.5 for the standard deviation of the population. So then your calculator is also going to ask you to put in the mean of the sample, 1.05. And the size of the sample, 100. And then you're going to indicate the direction. And in this class, I'm only going to test you on directions that are less than or greater than mu sub 0. Mu sub 0 is essentially HO. So we're going to test that the counterclaim is less than HO. So we're going to say less than mu sub 0. Then we're going to go down to calculate, hit enter. And we have some information here that um, we're, the z-score is provided to us. We're not going to need that right now, but we do need the p-value. So we're going to take this p-value and round it to four places. x-bar is the mean of our sample, stated again, and n the size of our sample. Our p-value comes out to be 0 0.0013 when we round it to four decimal places. So now we're ready to make our conclusion. We take this p-value and we compare it to alpha, which was point uh, which was 1%, which is 0.01 when expressed as a decimal. 
So compare 0.0013 to 0.01, and is your p-value smaller or larger than alpha? So if we go and we create the p-value um, for 1.05, the p-value for 1.05 0.0013 is smaller in area than 0.01. I don't have these shaded areas in proportion at all to the bell curve. I just want to demonstrate to you how 0.0013 is smaller in size than 0.01. Okay, so that's the important thing to look at. It, you have to just recognize that the p-value is smaller than alpha. And based on your decision rules, since the p-value is smaller than alpha, you can reject the null hypothesis. So the p-value, which is shaded in orange, is smaller than alpha. The p-value fits inside of alpha. And it's considered to be very significant. 1.05 is very significant because that p-value is so small it's less than one percent so in general our conclusion is if we have a p-value that's less than alpha we reject the null hypothesis and we accept the alternative hypothesis so in this problem we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis at alpha equal one percent that's our textbook conclusion but now I want you to answer the question um, Okay, so everybody make sure you understand that the conclusion is reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. That comes from the decision rule. In your decision rule, you stated that you were going to reject the null hypothesis if the p-value was smaller than alpha. The p-value is smaller than alpha, so you will reject HO and accept HA. But what does that truly mean in the context of this problem? So you're going to answer the question. Do drug-injected rats have a mean response time less than 1.2 seconds? So you rejected the null hypothesis. By rejecting the null hypothesis, you reject that the mean is 1.2. So the answer to the question is yes. The sample result supports the claim that drug-injected rats have a mean response time less than 1.2 seconds. Okay, so you rejected the null hypothesis, you rejected that mu equals 1.2, so you can say that the mean response time truly is less than 1.2 seconds. So now, now that we've answered the question, and, and this is a problem just like we did last class, but I'm going to take it one step further and ask, what type of error is possible in this problem? Okay, so... This, this explanation is what I just stated. When you reject the null hypothesis, you reject the population parameter 1.2 and accept that it must be less. Okay, so that's, that's an, uh, an explanation of the actual um, question that's being asked here. And now we're going to look at the errors again. So we came up with this chart before we even did the problem. Now, Based on our decision, our decision was to reject the null hypothesis. What type of error is possible? So we look at reject the null hypothesis. We read across this row, and we see that there are two things that could have happened. We could have made the right decision. In actuality, the population mean truly is less than 1.2 seconds, and we could have made the right decision when we rejected the null hypothesis but we could have also made the wrong decision and made a type, type 1 error, which means that the null hypothesis is truly 1.2 seconds. It's really 1.2 seconds, but we incorrectly rejected it. So I'll ask you what kind of error is possible and what does it mean, and you'll say a type 1 error is possible, because that was the conclusion to reject the null hypothesis so a type 1 error is possible and what it means is that the true population mean response time for drug injected rats is really 1.2 seconds but you incorrectly rejected a true null hypothesis okay so that is I would suggest you always use the chart to figure out your type 1 type 2 errors you may be able to do this without the chart but if you're struggling, definitely use the chart. It really will help.